holidays, YouTubers. My name is Amber, and I hope you're enjoying a fabulous week before Christmas. If you're off of school, enjoy that break from your finals. Enjoy that time with your family. Get ready for the craziness to ensue. Um, so before we get into the hecticness of spending time with our family and friends, I wanted to come on here and share with you my intentions for my makeup collection in 2015 because the past couple of days I followed suit to many of you and I finally completed my makeup inventory. Whew, that was a long process. And I applaud you um, if you have shared yours via YouTube because not only is it a lot of work, um, it takes a lot of guts to come on here and, and be very brutally honest about, about what we own. So. Um, I thought that the way that I did my inventory might be helpful for some of you as you're starting your own Pan That Palette journeys for 2015 um, because a lot of you are going to have some of the realizations that I had this year as I finished my um, Naked Palette or not finished yet, almost there, but um, I had a lot of different realizations about myself and how I use my makeup. So I wanted to share the tips that I used as I did my inventory and and perhaps they will help you so first off with pan that palette i really realized as i ran out of shades that throughout any palette whether you buy drugstore or high end you're going to find comparable shades across the board it just it is what it is and so as i made my inventory instead of just saying i have X number of palettes. I actually didn't count up how many palettes I have. It's in the 20s. But um, when I actually took a look at my palettes, the way I did my inventory was I came on here and wrote like Lorac Pro, since that's going to be what I pan in 2015. I wrote the 16 shades so that as I finish each one, I can cross them off. This is very helpful to me because I have depotted a lot of my makeup. And so when I'm looking at like Urban Decay Books of Shadow and things, this will help me to realize just how much of a palette I've used. Um, because now, since it's been depotted, I don't necessarily know because when it's in a big Z palette, there's like twice as much as what you had before. You know what I mean? So um, I went on here and did all of my colorful products. Every eyeshadow, every um, palette, quad trio um, all of my l'oreal infallible shades lip liners lipsticks lip glosses the whole nine yards i just went in here and listed each item one by one by one so that i can write the date that i finished them and cross them off the list because i really want to see just how much of my makeup i can get through and with that being said I have decided that from as of a couple of days ago until November of 2015, I will be on a no buy as far as any colorful makeup products. Yes, yes, I am ready to do this. I am saying it out loud here on YouTube. Thank you, Andrea, for getting that process going because I just, <sighs> I'm ready, ready. Um, I will have to repurchase foundation. Um, concealer, possibly mascara, because those are not things I have a backup stash for, um, because I am pretty good about using those one at a time, but um, I am absolutely restricting myself as far as any um, blush, lipstick, lip gloss, eyeshadow, eye base, you name it. I want to see how much of a dent, um, because this year with Pan That Palette, to give you a rough estimate, I finished about 17 eyeshadows, give or take. There are going to be a couple more. I need to physically go in and count everything. Um, so it's a lot. It, it's finishing a lot, but it's not a lot when I'm continuing to bring more stuff into my collection. So I really want to make some brutal cuts <laughs> um, to my makeup. And the other reason I did my inventory this way is I figured... Um, it will help me doing shop that stash when I come on here for videos for you guys because if I'm using say a look from the Lorac Pro palette and you don't own the Lorac Pro palette I can go in and say okay well here's the Maybelline equivalent in an iStudio quad or here is the um, CoverGirl equivalent or you know or Naked palette equivalent any of that so I thought it would be way more helpful so if you have not done your inventory yet or you're feeling overwhelmed as you're 
wanting to start your project pan. I know a lot of you are new to project panning. It is a very, very challenging um, endeavor. It is not for the faint of heart and you're gonna have days where you're just like, oh my word, is this ever going to end? <laughs> I figured seeing those slash marks in here is going to be all the worthwhile because I mean, like, a, you know, for 2014 alone, finishing just the naked palette is a monumental task. Um, and, and already I'm, I'm watching you um, start panning your Lorac Pro palettes and you're zipping through them. So I'm thinking, we're going to fly. We're going to fly. In fact, I might need to add Lorac Pro 2 to panning along with Lorac Pro because I'm watching, especially Sam. She showed her video this morning, Rising Water. I will link her video in the description box below. She's already finished one shade and she's about to hit pan on a couple more and I'm like we're not even in January yet we're gonna fly through this <laughs> so it made me very excited but I wanted to come on here and put it out in YouTube permanent dumb that I will be on a no buy for um, the next year the next year so um, I hope you guys will decide to join me. I know there are a lot of you that I'm going to be depending on you um, to rally with me when I hit my brick walls and I'm bored and I just want to go shopping. So let's be here as a support for one another and an encouragement. Before I go, I have to um, share with you an interesting experience I had this morning um, because it'll just give you some further motivation in your project plan from a health perspective. Um, but be very, very careful if you're a fan of NARS. Um, and I say that because as far as chemical ingredients and synthetic products that we can find in our makeup, NARS is one of the most intense brands that we could choose to put our money into. And um, like as far as toxicity level and things like that. But I have repressed things and repotted things from brands, drugstore to high end, and I've never had the chemical breakdown that I've had with NARS. It's, it's been an interesting experience to say the least. Um, in fact, I'll show you what happened today. I decided to repress my NARS blush in Sin um, because it was starting to crack. I wanted it to fill up the bottom of the pan so I could continue using it without any problems. It's a beautiful berry color with gold kind of um, shimmers. It's very subtle. Um, but what I wanted to share with you, just as a word of caution, this is what's going into our skin. All I did was I repressed that blush with rubbing alcohol, and this is what transferred. This isn't berry, you guys. This is bright fuchsia. Like, that is what is leaching into our skin. When we wear liquid foundation, when we wear primers and serums and different things, that is what's going into our skin. So just word for the wise, if you're wanting to go more vegan friendly, cruelty free, more organic, um, because I've, I finally reached an epiphany to help me not buy so much makeup because despite my love for NARS, um, I just can't bring myself to buy any more NARS products because they do stuff like this. Um, because when I've repressed makeup from other brands usually when the color transfers it's color to color not berry to fuchsia hmm. i don't know it was just it was a little weird for me so just be careful and if you're being more health conscious um, nars is definitely a brand you're going to want to move out of your collection if not downsize it completely if you really don't want to be using those products on your skin so Putting it out there. Um, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I will have some more videos coming this week. It's just been really crazy getting ready for Christmas. So, yep, I will be seeing you guys very, very soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.